Within Signalis' war, there's heavy connections between three very important parts of the war, these being bioresonance, the Empire, and the Canyon Yellow. By exploring the connection between these, we can begin to understand more about them all. Warning, this video may contain spoilers about Signalis. If you have not finished the game and do not wish to be spoiled, then finish the game before continuing. With this spoiler out of the way, let's get into exploring this connection and what it can tell us. To start, to truly understand this video, you're going to want to have watched four prior videos of mine. These being the King and Yellow introduction video, the Flesh Below Wang video, the Yusan Empire video, and the basics of bioresonance. To recap what is important from those videos for this one is the following. From the King and Yellow, remember that the King and Yellow can influence reality, and that the ritual is a distinct symbol of the King. From the Flesh Below Lang, remember that the King is connected to the Flesh heavily, and that the Flesh is another name for nowhere. From the Empire or Queen video, remember that the Empire worshipped by a resonance, that the Queen's grave is within nowhere, and that the Queen united humanity into the Empire. So with that recap done, we can begin exploring the connection between the three. To begin, we should connect by a resonance to the King. This can be easily done by considering the King's powers in its respective war. As the book can distort its readers, this influencing of the reader is similar in many ways to how bioresonant can influence minds and emotions of others, really think the Calibri and Folk units. This connection between the two can be seen in other aspects, one of the most notable being the cover of the book. On the cover of the King in Yellow, we see a halo and three stars. These are two symbols that are heavily connected to bioresonance throughout the game. This establishes that not only do they have similar powers, but they are also connected in design aspects. Next we have Bioresonance and the Empress. This one is fairly simple, and there is zero question that the Empress was a very powerful Bioresonant individual, so we don't really need to spend any time proving that aspect. Finally, we have the Empress and the King in Yellow. These two connect in one key way, and this is in regards to Nowhere. Within Nowhere, there is the Icon of Knowledge, a grave to the Empress. The grave being within the flesh, which is connected to the King, creates a connection of sorts between the two. However, there is another, albeit far weaker, connection between the two. The symbol of the ritual and the symbol of the empire are both centered around a hexagon, with the empire having a rotating hexagon that grows, while the ritual is a 2D diagram of a tesseract. So now it should be solidly confirmed that these three are heavily connected to each other. So what does this mean? Well, here is really where theory begins, and we partake away from lore. First, let's explore a question. Why is the Queen in Nowhere? For Elster's quest, it really wasn't important to learn about the Queen's fate, nor does any details about her really matter from Elster's perspective. Remember, Elster is just a traveler who is looking for her lover. She doesn't really care about the fate of an empress from long ago in an empire that's now fallen in a state that doesn't care about. However, it considers this piece of learning to be worthy of the title of the Plate of Knowledge. This can be used to assume that the flesh itself, and by extension the king, wanted Elster to learn about the Empress's fate. By the way, while we are here, this is a very strong counter-argument for dream theory, as neither Falk, Arion, nor Issa would have any real care or you know, reason to present to Elster what happened to the Empress and likely none had any idea about the true nature of her rule, considering that they were all born after it, they all live in a state that heavily suppressed it, and all three of them, again, just wouldn't have viewed it as something that is integral for Elster to know. So why would the flesh want Elster to know what happened to the Empress? That is a solid question that I don't have an answer to, but we can ask some other questions that relate to this to try and deepen our understanding. First up, why do bioresonant symbols take the depiction they do? Specifically, the three stars. The halo seems to be a naturally occurring phenomenon for powerful bioresonance, and we see this from Falk. But the three stars are not. These three stars are seen in the King in Yellow, the Flag of the Nation, and then the Millennial Night book by the Empire. One may wager, well, what about the four heads of bioresonance? The three stars are seen here, and thus 
it is here where they got the connection from, they saw it on people, and then they connected it to be the symbol of bioresonance. However, for that to be the case, we'd have to assume that the three stars are a naturally occurring phenomenon which I think there is a decent amount of evidence to prove the contrary, and that these markers are most likely artificial and put there by the nation. To give some proof to that, Ariane lacks them. You would think the strongest bioresonant that we know, or at least one of the strongest bioresonants that we know in the lore, would have these symbols if they were something that naturally occurred. Second, she had to have a test. The nation tested her for bioresonance. Why would you test people for bioresonance if bioresonance was something that just obviously showcased itself with the three stars? So, for me, it doesn't really seem like the stars could be natural. So where does the symbol come from? Well, the king in yellow is a very strong possibility. Seen as this ancient book depicts the exact symbol, and that the book likely far predates not just the nation, but also the empire, and the book has bioresonant powers and attributes, so perhaps the concept of the three stars originated from the cover of the King in Yellow. So why does that matter? Well, it means the Empire knew of the existence of the King in Yellow, and understood that it held bioresonant powers. And not only that, it chose to use its symbolism to decide on a symbol for something that it worshipped, that being bioresonance. This creates a strong connection between the Empress and the King, and raises a question. Did the Empress use this lost text for her own benefit? The Empress's power was immense, and the only one in the lore who is even comparable was Arion. Arion, who is known to have used the powers of the king, at least in some part. So the question is right. Did the Empress use the king in yellow to unite humanity and establish her rule? It is very possible, seeing as the empire which worshipped bioresonance wasn't exactly a state that would shun the extremely powerful bioresonant king, even if it knew of its existence. So we've established that the Empire most likely knew of the King in Yellow, and at the very least decided to use symbolism from it to depict the uh, very idea of what it worshipped. This is a strong connection, but it doesn't exactly answer why the flesh would show Elster the Queen. And the answer to that question, honestly, isn't something I can say. I don't know why the flesh would show the Queen. If she was someone who worked with him and something that he wanted to prove as a token of goodwill, why would he show Elster that she died? Why of all scenes would he show the thing that demarks her death? To me, I'm at an impasse here. And frankly, I want to hear y'all's theories in this regard. And I want to be able to work on other parts of theory and come back to this when we have more established. Speaking of other theories, I want to quickly take a moment here. Someone already submitted a theory on the previous video, and I may as well read it here. Zhu Ayers stated, My theory is nowhere is the Empire's abandoned test site for experimenting on the flesh. I mostly theorize it based on the scratched up nuclear waste warning found at the beginning of nowhere. The Empire experimenting on how to contain the flesh, eventually stopping it from going airborne, as Ito describes the place that the air feels like she'd take a bite of it. Eventually, the Empire managed to contain the flesh. The plate used in the puzzle is the prototype, as when expected, it described as wet and fleshy inside. The Empire uses this flesh to make replicas. It theorized that replicas' color scheme is mainly black because they're using the same material to contain the flesh inside replicas. Yule, R, and Star is more stable, and they retain its human in shape because they use more black material. Storches and Calibri lost it, their humanoid shape, due to the use of less black material. I think it's a rather interesting theory and a rather interesting connection between the Empire, the King, the flesh, and replicas. I wanted to give it time in a video to at least, you know, Look at it. But here is where I honestly fold. The King in Yellow series still has many videos and topics I wish to explore, however for the most part I am done with the Empire, and honestly nowhere. I may come back to them in the future, but I feel as though understanding both of them is going to require more lore to be explored and understood. And for now I feel as though any product I hand you guys theories wise is just not going to be as good as I expect on this channel. I hope you all enjoyed regardless, and I'm excited to see what theories you all hold in this concept. If you'd like to talk to other Signalist fans about the lore, or just in general, I have two Discords linked below. My main Discord, VSL, and a Signalist Discord, on off. They are both cool places, and I suggest you check them both out. Finally, once again, thank you to Skelly for supporting my membership. Your contributions help make this series possible. So with that, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time. Mm -hmm.